kind of getting better at what we were doing. And what was cool is that we were we were getting recommendations from other actors that we really liked. And I don't I don't know how in the world did you hook up? Oh, so yeah. I was a Radio Disney DJ, and someone from Radio Disney had taken a tour, and they found out that there were auditions at the time. That's that's how I found okay. out about it. You were a squeege. I was squeege. Yeah, yeah. I was a DJ, and, and Kara Edwards, who's Fidel and Goten, also came in at the same time and auditioned and, and got booked on. We over. were really lucky with a lot of the main people that came in after that that we were able to really get some solid people. Like Kyle coming in was so refreshing. Uh, How many we, actors did we have in the first twenty? Like at most, we had like eleven when we first started. Like when we first <laughs> were dubbing it, twenty about uh, six months into it, and we had we did thousands of auditions. It's just. Funimation again didn't have a lot of money back then, so they weren't allowed to. They weren't able to pay a whole lot of money to have people record it. So a lot of the agencies and uh, who were, were kind of hesitant to send any of their people over. Not that it would have mattered anyway, because most of the people in Dallas at that time were only used to like reading radio commercials or doing. Uh, there was no such. There wasn't really a voice acting business. There was narration in Texas, but there was not a lot of voice acting. There weren't a ton of people with experience doing it. So yeah, I don't a think lot of our really good actors came from theater, the yeah. theater scene, you know, because I guess that was the closest thing to it, you know, to living a character and stuff. But just doing radio spots and stuff like that for commercials. But know. we were so lucky when we finally stumbled upon Kyle and Kara Edwards, Colleen who plays. Uh, yeah, Colleen came along later, but I remember uh, like Laura and uh, yeah, Meredith yeah. McCoy. Uh, but it was she played uh, Kid Trunks and Android 18. They came in, and I remember there's a funny story about. Uh, Eric Vale, um, he plays Trunks in the series. He, we, we were looking really hard to find the voice of Trunks. We were desperately trying to find a voice uh, for him. And so we were doing a lot of auditions, trying to find somebody. There wasn't anybody who was just right. And then I remembered, wait a minute, there was this dude who auditioned for us a while back. And he, I, I remember even writing on the audition form like Trunks question mark, but it was months beforehand and I couldn't, I couldn't find that piece of paper that had his information on to contact him. But I remembered that he did have a, he, he was one of the few actors that actually brought in a headshot, like a picture of him. So when I found that picture, I was like, this is the guy I need to find. And believe it or not, somebody was in recording that day and said, I know who that is. I go, really? She goes, yeah, that's that's Eric Vale. So was it Tiffany? Really. It was Tiffany. Yeah. It was the girl who played Bulma. So Bulma, Vegeta, is looking for trunks, and so Bulma... <laughs> character and go like when Gohan becomes an adult that's another part that was really important too but uh, when Trunks came along he was like the first major character to, to come along in the series like a good as a guy that was gonna stick around had to be as good as the rest of the main cast and uh, I was really worried that Trunks had to be rock solid because he comes in he, he doesn't have the same like lead in that a lot of the other characters had a badass from the first scene. yeah from the very first moment Eric really like really brought that and that, that was some of my favorite time all the way through Androids, Trunks, like the like kid, like teen Gohan in high school. I loved all that stuff. Like that was really fun. How, I mean, how long from his first appearance as Trunks to the moment he just completely dismantles Frieza? It's like minutes, right? Oh, he. That's yeah, one of the first things he does. He yeah. just yeah. Like, comes in like within an episode. Can't like, have this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's been so long. I'm really excited. If we do get to record super soon. Uh, if we aren't already, but uh, I am, I am very, very, very excited to be, and yeah. uh, or to be working on it eventually. I, I, I would be as well, because <laughs> these new movies have been incredible to work on. Oh my God! Yeah, the last one was a blast to do. Did you guys see it? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for making the last two movies like show up on the top ten of the yeah. movies yeah. in Hollywood box office receipts. That yeah. that, that really sends a good message to yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. 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 Sean Schimmel wanted to, like, kept talking about him wanting to break. He's like, all I wanted to do is to do better than Dragon Ball Evolution did. Like, oh. We were like within a million and a half away from it, like, which is, it wasn't too far away. Like, we were really, For an independent film to do that, that's yeah. amazing. It was an independent film, it wasn't backed by a major studio, uh, really like a Hollywood, you know, movie yeah. studio. Yeah, release, which yeah. sold out many screenings, so they had to add more. 
Yeah. That's it was good. essentially a Kickstarter, like the yeah, way yeah. it was handled. So you guys did great. It was awesome. I know I saw it. I saw it a couple times in the theater myself, and I saw it like five times when we were touring with it. And it was I I loved it every time. Me too. That's, good. that's fantastic. And being able to work on those this new material, that's why I'm so excited if Super starts happening. It's getting to work with the. I'm really excited to direct again. I, I've been I've taken a long break from actually directing Dragon Ball except for the movies. I just love working on it with people who already know what their roles are. Like, I don't have to come in and teach anybody how to do anything. You just sit back and watch like Kyle do his thing, yeah. and then Sonny comes in and does his thing, and you just sit there and make sure that it sounds okay. Sonny, can you be more Krillin-y? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that's messed up your Krillin, I would say, just a yeah. fraction, is the fact that you play Usopp, which is... It, well, here's the difference. Okay, Krillin I can do all day, because it's just right in here. But Usopp has a hitch in his voice, and that fucking hitch hurts. <laughs> <laughs> All day. I just know that it's, it's not like you drift into that voice, but I know you, I can tell on days when you recorded that voice. So. Yeah, you can By the look in your face. Oh uh, my god, more depression. streaming. <laughs> I love recording, I, I look forward to recording more of Kyle, because Kyle, um, I'll just have you all know, is really easy to get um, going into a giggle fit. Uh, <laughs> yes. Kyle will not stop laughing at something. He's like literally one of my favorite people to do this to, but if you just, even if it's just right before it's taken, you just go like, <laughs> uh, he will start giggling and he won't be able to control it. It just destroys him. Yeah, it totally crumbles my professional work ethic. I'm trying to like, I'm gonna get so many lines done per hour and we're, we're gonna go home oh, an hour early. And all you have to do is make him start laughing about something and you will derail it for like a good 15 minutes. So like, oh. All I have to do is when he's doing the narrator just change one or two lines to something different than it was supposed to be. Like With a bang of the emperor's gong and you like change it to the with a bang of the emperor's schlong. <laughs> <laughs> and then once he sees it, he starts reading it, he gets almost to that word and he's just going... <laughs> <laughs> and he can't hold it. He can't hold it. It's awesome. Yeah. Easy to throw me off. I didn't know how good Kyle was as an actor until I cast him in a Lupin movie, and it just happened because my actor playing the part uh, wouldn't show up. And Kyle was walking in the hallway. I said, Kyle, can you do a German accent? He goes, y'all go. I said, get in the booth. <laughs> and uh, after that, I, I cast him in every movie because <laughs> he's very versatile. <laughs> then the management's like, can you cast someone else, please? No, the other actors were saying that. So Kyle's going to be in everything. <laughs> yeah, that explains it. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, have you guys ever voiced at the same time together? Uh, no. Not really, no. The, the, it, everything in anime is typically done, and a lot of stuff in video games is still, to this day, done mostly by itself. Like, you, the timing in anime is too critical to have everybody in the room at the same time. The only time you might be in there with some friends is if you're doing what's called a wall of session, which is all the background sounds, all the background people talking in a scene. And that's where you'll bring in four to eight people at one time just to kind of do the background right. sound. Well, we had that one scene in DBZ where it's in a gym, everyone's working out. So we had you and Aaron, our engineer, and me. And I kept laughing, of course, because <laughs> the sound just alone just sounded like porn. It was all <laughs> Uh, probably lost about th the 30 minutes to Kyle laughing. <laughs> Let's do a Kamehameha -ha blast right now in unison, then we have worked together as our characters. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Kame! Actually, 
No, Chris, the day he died, Chris was like, man, I'm sorry. Uh, your character is dying today. <laughs> and he had no idea either. He was like, you know, it was a good run with him. And uh, I really liked that. He was like, I really like that character. I'm 